This is a throwback series posted once every Thursday on the untold stories in the Dodge Mahal. Last Thursday, the Dodge Mahal was breaking down. We couldn't find our perfect river camp spot, so we settled for the train tracks and just had a terrible night. Hope you got some entertainment out of that. In this episode, we actually do find a pretty cool spot, so I hope you enjoy as we try to get the Dodge Mahal fixed while living full-time out of it on the road. I just met a local who walked by. He does this walk, apparently, up and down the railroad tracks um, and down by the river, and he confirmed that I can get across uh, to the other side of the river. Nobody will bother you there. It'd be a great spot of the river. You can camp there. Hey, there's the river. Here we are. So yeah, it looks like we can tuck back even further way back here by these trees. This is so awesome. I'm so glad I came down here. Uh, it looks like it dead ends a little bit further. I could camp even just right here if I needed. Uh, and there's the river. Check it out. Go to come check this spot out. You got your own little kiddie pool, or as we call it, coda pool. Right where she goes first, of course. But yeah, what a great spot. Obviously, that's real white watery. We don't want to be sucked into that. But right in here is all a little muddy, and she can walk all along through here and kind of bathe and graze. And that's the end right there. We could have gone up there, but this is lower. This is a little closer to the water, which I like. And we have successfully, I think, I mean, we'll test this theory. I think we got to a spot where the waves are gonna be louder than the train. Um, the train is certainly gonna be a lot quieter. <laughs> ah, it's so funny to me, all the different like places you camp and the things you deal with. And the train was really funny to me because it just went from peaceful, super awesomely quiet to ah, 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 we're all gonna die. Check this out. Ah, ah look at this. Ah, yeah. Dig it up. See? Rip it up. She's like, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. I wanted to get on top and start digging it up and roll around in it. No, not interested. All right, well, hopefully soon. I'm about to have a beer here, but not just any old beer. Uh, Winter Detour Double IPA. Hey, hey. Why is this so great? Well, first of all, I mean, come on, look at it. It's like a scout. I think that's an international scout. Wow, it's a scout. And then that, obviously, you guys know that's like a little Airstream. And then that right there, 9.55, means that it just kind of drives home a little harder than the average. So yeah, um, we're gonna go ahead and head and peek into the Dometic here. And uh, give me some, one of these. Oh, Coda wants to go outside too. And so yeah, oh, this needs a koozie. Ah, ah, ah. Needs a koozie. I'm gonna get my favorite koozie. And you wanna know why it's my favorite koozie? Is not necessarily what's on it. Even though I absolutely love what's on it. But I say that because I have some really cool koozies. King of the Hammers, Ram, Cummins. But this icon one is the highest quality koozie that I have and that I've ever owned. The stitching on it, you see the stitching? Oh yeah, it's very thin, but it's very thick. This material is just beautiful, I love it. So let's get this bad boy in there. Okay, here, ready for the install. So for the install, you're gonna wanna get one end in and the other end in and give it a good slide and push. And uh, you'll know it's installed when it's on. 
and you can see that it's around it. The only real bummer about this, and even though, like I said, I really love Icon, really love their shocks, and I love their koozies, but I can't see the good old Scout. But it's worth it for the performance. Woo! Ooh, yeah. She really packs a punch there, don't she, bud? Who don't want to see? Let's go. It's beautiful out here. Class 5 Rapids. No, I'm just kidding. Probably solid class three though, right there. It's pretty gnar. These are all flood like uh, glacier, uh, snow melts waters. And you can literally see the snowy mountains up here that they're coming from. And uh, yeah, these rivers are way flooded out. I was talking to the local guy today about it who told me to come down this road. But uh, you can see the Snowy mountains back up here. It's nice, I like having a view of snowy mountains. Ooh, it's a little hot out here though. Cody, go down to this little river. But yeah, these rapids are really cool. And they're ripping. Well, another biscuits and gravy success. So, this time I did the biscuits in the roll, because they're way better. And I used mild sausage. It doesn't really taste spicy, but it smelled different, tastes good, tastes a little different. And I used three slices of bacon, which was way better. And I used real milk instead of condensed milk, which I don't know if it worked as well. I think it might have reduced a little quicker, but absolutely delicious. I'm just gonna eat this right by this river here and enjoy the night. I had a good couple days at the river just embracing the situation and actually uh, got reached out to by Jack on Instagram who had a super sweet Chevy with solid axle swap and Bundu Tech truck camper. So I did a walk around on that video that I'll link below and it was really great to have him come out and actually meet me at the river as the truck was broke down. But after he left and a couple more days passed, my mood started to change a little bit and I got a little bit more anxious. I'm supposed to take the truck in today and it's raining. And why is that a problem? Because we got our Coda girl here and we were just gonna take her on a walk around the river and we can't really do that in the rain. She would be super cold. So I looked at hotels and there's hotels nearby but they don't accept dogs. And I looked at a kennel, and it's only $12 for like six hours at a kennel, but they need uh, up-to-date rabies shots. Of course, I totally get that, and I don't really have those. Um, she got rabies shots before I got her, and I don't really, I lost the proof or whatever. So I need, I've been planning to go to a vet um, in Oregon before I go to Canada, because I need those to cross the border to Canada, but... Um, I just haven't done that yet, and it's just a bummer, man. Um, this is the worst day on the road so far as far as, like, just being so annoyed with regular life um, and just trying to get regular things done, like drop my car off at the shop. Um, and, like, my fridge. My, fr my fridge is not running very well because it's not getting a good charge because it's gloomy so I gotta start the truck just to charge the fridge off the isolator um, and that still doesn't get me anywhere tomorrow looks like it'll be a better more sunny day I might just push it off till tomorrow I, I would walk around in the rain all day but I just don't I, I want to do what's right for Coda and I want to make sure she's comfy because she's the sweetest doggo ever and uh, 
it's really hard traveling with her sometimes. Not because of her, just because she's a dog and people are like, oh, dogs, oh, oh no, dogs can't do this, and dogs can't do that. So, I don't know. Kind of bummed right now and trying to think of what to do. I've been sitting at this spot. I've been getting work done, right? I've been editing videos, I've been productive. But I've been sitting at the spot just waiting to get this truck worked on for four days now. And I don't want to sit here anymore. I don't want to camp here anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. Struggles of full-time life on the road with a pup. And uh, if I had a... Tr I wish so bad that I had a trailer right now. Because if I had a trailer, I would just park it, you know, somewhere. Leave Coda inside. Drive the truck to the shop, walk back to the trailer, um, and hang out. And I would maybe, you know, probably even be able to put the trailer by the shop or something. But anyways, that, yeah, that'd, that'd be the coolest thing about having a trailer. Well, it's really funny to edit this one year later when I have a very reliable truck and a trailer and to see the pros and cons. And ultimately, your perspective is everything. There is no perfect overland rig. Everything has its ups and downs. Thank you so much for watching. Um, one thing I did want to mention is I just got some merch. Well, I hate calling it merch. These are awesome t-shirts that I designed myself. This one specifically though, Overland Art did the digital rendering right here. It's also on the back there. And it's really hard to film the back, but anyways, you get the point. Um, but check out all the shirts that we got. I'll put the link above, teespring.com slash stores slash down to mob. We got some cool camo ones too that I really like. But these are great quality shirts. They really feel great. Um, I'm a big guy, the 2XL does good. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. And you all know that the only question is, are you down to mob? See you next time.